Hello everyone, welcome back to Force Fellow. My name is Ashok. Today in this video, we will discuss about a very important and newly introduced operator in Apex, that is null coalescing operator. This operator was already available in most of the programming languages like in C Sharp, PHP, JavaScript, and in many others. But this was missing from Apex. So very long back, there was an idea posted on Idea Exchange to have it in Apex as well. I also given a vote to this idea and also added my comment here in October 2022 because this operator is very important and can help us to reduce unnecessary if else conditions and number of lines in code and also it can help us to improve code quality and readability. Now due to high demand and due to the advantages of null coalescing operator, Salesforce has decided to include it in Apex and will release in upcoming Spring 24 release which means now this operator is available in Apex, so we can start using it, alright? Now let's move ahead and see what null coalescing operator is and how it can help us in our day to day programming. But to understand it better, first let's see some problem statements or use cases that will give you more clarity. And for that, let's open our developer console. Here I have opened execute anonymous window which can help us to temporarily write and test our code. And here I already created few use cases where first use case says if contact email is null then assign NA. I mean here we are getting one contact record from database using SQL query. Now let's say we want to print this contact email address but the condition is if email address is null then we have to show NA. Alright. So this is the first use case we have. Now, if we talk about solutions to achieve this requirement, then first solution would be using if else conditions like this. Here we are checking if contact email is not equals to null, then assign contact email address into this string variable, else assign NA. This code is fine and will complete our requirement as well. But do you really think we need to write these four to five lines of code to achieve this simple requirement or what will happen if we have more complex requirement like this second use case which says store non-null value in final str variable out of below string variables. I mean here we have four string variables str1, 2, 3 and 4. Now let's say we need to implement a logic which says if str1 is not null then store str1 value in a new variable. If that is null then store str2. And if str2 is null, then store str3, else store str4 value. Okay. Now, if we talk about solutions to achieve this requirement, then first and basic solution would be using if else conditions like this. Here, first we are checking if str1 is not null, then storing str1 value in final str variable, which we declared here. And if str1 is null, then control will move to the if else and here we are checking str2 is not equals to null then storing str2 value and similarly checking for str3 and 4 right so this is how using if else conditions we can achieve our this requirement but again if we see lines of code for this solution then here we have written around 12 lines and in modern programming this is not acceptable I mean these if else conditions makes our code more lengthy and complex, right? Now if we talk about modern and better option to achieve these requirements, then that's where null coalescing operator comes into picture. First let's go through definition slide, then we will try to achieve these use cases with the help of null coalescing operator and we'll see how efficiently it can enhance our code, alright? Now let's discuss what the null coalescing operator is. So we can say it's a new operator that returns the left side operand if that is not null. Otherwise, it returns the right side operand. Now let's understand how it works. As a input, it takes two operands. Here operand means value or variable. So in other words, we can say it takes two values as input left and right. If you see in this example, here we have two variables a and b. a is available in left side and b is available in right side. And to implement null coalescing operator, we have to use double question mark sign. 
So this double question mark sign called the coalescing operator. Now what this operator will do? It will simply check if left operand is not null then it will return left operand which is A in our case else it will return right side operand which is B in our case. Okay. In other words the coalescing operator start checking values from left side and returns the first not null value and also it allows to do chaining I mean we can chain multiple null coalescing operators together in single expression like this. Now how it will execute? As I said it will already start checking operands from left side. So first it will check if A is not null then it will directly returns A without checking other variables but if A is null then it will go ahead and check for B and if B is not null then it will return B else similarly it will check for other operands right. So in nutshell the null coalescing operator is start evaluating from left side and returns the first non null operand. Now here you might be thinking what will happen if all operands are null like this a b and c all these are null then obviously null value will be assigned into this x variable and we can say null coalescing operator is a better way to apply null checks during assignments without applying too many conditions and writing cluttered code. Alright, now I think it's clear to you what null coalescing operator is and how we can use it. So let's move ahead and try to achieve our use cases with this new operator. First let's start with use case 1. Here what we want to do? So as a use case we want to store contact email address in a variable but if that is null then NA should be there which means as a left side operand we will use contact email and as a right side operand we can directly assign a static NA like like this. Now let's print this new variable as well in debug logs and now let's execute this code and see what it will print in debug logs. All right. In both debug logs, we can see email address. Why? Because we have email address in this contact record, which means left side operand was not null. That's why this operator returns left side value. Now let's try with another contact who don't have email address assigned. And try to execute it again. Alright, now we can see NA at both places because, because this contact don't have value in email address field. Okay, this is so simple, right? Now let's try to achieve second use case with the help of this operator. Alright, here we have declared another string variable and using coalescing operator checking variables and assigning value into new variable and printing this new variable into debug logs as well. Now here as a output we should see str4 because all these three variables has null value right. So to test it let's execute this code. All right. Here at both places we can see str4. Now let's say we have value in str2 like, like this then what will happen? Let's see. Alright so as expected we can see str2 here because, because this is the first non null variable we have out of these. Right, which means now we have implemented our use cases in two ways. First is using traditional if else, and second is using null coalescing operator. But 
If we compare the code with traditional if else solution, then it requires more lines of code to handle null checks and assignments. But with the help of null coalescing operator, we can achieve same outcome in just a single line. All right. So you can see it simplifies null checks and make our code clear and more straightforward. This approach not only enhances our code readability but also reduces the overall lines of code and make our implementation more effective and maintainable. All right. Now I think it's clear to you how to use null coalescing operator in Apex. So from today, you should definitely start using it in your day-to-day -day programming. Okay. Now before moving ahead, let's see a few more examples where the null coalescing operator can be applied. Here in first example, we have two string variables str1 and str2. str1 has empty string and two contains hello world. Now here we have used null coalescing operator and we have str1 at left side and str2 at right side. Now here what we will get in this result variable? Will we get hello world or empty string? Let's execute this code and see. All right, here we can see empty string, which means null coalescing operator does not treat empty string as null. That's why here we can see empty string. So that you should keep in your mind, like empty string always treated as a string, not as a null. All right. Next example we have with collections. Here what we are doing, we are calling a method and storing response in demo set variable. And here we are printing size of this set. Now. Let's execute this code and see what will happen. All right, we got a null pointer exception. Why? Because this method is returning null value. So we will have null in this demo set variable as well. And here we are trying to invoke size extension method. Now at runtime, what will happen? Program will find null value in this variable and throw a null pointer exception because this variable does not contain any valid object or memory location. So if we try to access methods or properties from a null variable, then we will always see a null pointer exception. Okay. Now the question is how we can write preventive code because at runtime we may get anything from other methods. Though here intentionally we are returning null from this method just to create a scenario. But in real world applications, we may get anything from methods including null due to any scenario, right? Now here again question is how we can write code so that can handle null response as well. Now as a solution or as a best practice, we can do two things. First we can use safe navigation operator and second we can use null coalescing operator. First let me show you with null coalescing operator. So here what we can do, we can just add double question mark and initialize set here as a default value like like this now at runtime what will happen whenever this method will return null then coalescing operator will return this right side operand and set will be initialized with default value right which means now in this case demo set variable will not null so this code will work fine let me show you all right now we can't see error why because at runtime, this demo set variable was not null. Okay. Now let's try with another approach that is safe navigation operator. And to use it, we just need to add question mark before accessing any method or property. Let me add that here. And now let's run this code again. All right. Now also we can't see error. Why? Because at runtime, if left operand is null, then safe navigation operator will ignore right operand. What does it mean? It means whatever we have before this question mark, if that is null, then program will automatically ignore whatever we have in this right side. Okay. So guys, this is a very important operator and you should always use it with any potentially null object to avoid null pointer exception at runtime. Okay. Now, if someone asks you about the difference between single question mark and double question mark, then your answer should be single question mark is the sign of safe navigation operator. This is not a new operator. It was already available in Apex 
and helps to prevent null pointer exception at runtime. While the double question mark is the symbol of null coalescing operator, which helps to assign non-null or default value. All right. Now I think you have a fair idea about when we should use double question mark and when we should use single question mark. If still you have any question or if you want me to create a separate video on safe navigation operator with more scenarios, then do let me know in the comments. Okay. Now let's talk about third example. Here we are trying to fetch an account record from database with a particular ID. Now what will happen if this ID is invalid or if we do not have any account record with this ID? Let me show you by executing this code. All right, here we can see an query exception which says list has no rows for assignment to S object. Why? Simply because our SQL query is not returning any record. Maybe this ID is invalid. Okay. Now the question is how we can avoid this exception at runtime? Then answer would be using null coalescing operator by writing like this. Let's run this code again. Let's remove this commented code and try again. All right. Now we can't see error. Okay. So this is how we can use this operator in various situations to write more effective code. Okay. Now before wrapping this video, I would like to highlight few important notes. First is we can't use null coalescing operator as the left side of an assignment operator in an assignment. For example, we can't write like this in left side of assignment. We can't use this operator. We can only use it in right side of this equals operator. Equals operator is the assignment operator. So we can only use double question mark in right side of assignment operator, not in left side. Okay. Next we have SQL bind expressions doesn't support the null coalescing operator, which means we can't use this operator inside SQL queries. For example, here we can't write like I mean in this square bracket, we can't use null coalescing operator. Let's try to execute it. Okay. We can see an exception. Okay. So we can't use this null coalescing operator inside a SQL query. But if you have such kind of requirement, then what you can do, you can declare a variable outside of query like this and use null coalescing operator here. Now at last you can bind this variable inside your query like this. Okay. So that's it in this video where we have explored null coalescing operator in Apex. If this video helped you to learn something new, then please help me to buy like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Also, please don't forget to share your feedback in comments. That will really give me motivation to create more videos. Thank you so much. We'll see you in next video.